conservation laws. Charge, baryon number and lepton number are conserved in all particle interactions, whereas strangeness is conserved in strong interactions, but not in weak interactions. To check whether an interaction is possible, simply check that the conserved quantities are the same before and after the interaction. As an example, let's look at beta minus decay. This is where a neutron becomes a proton, ejecting an electron and an electron antineutrino. First we'll look at conservation of charge. The neutron has zero charge, the proton a charge of plus one, the electron a charge of minus one, and the electron antineutrino is neutral. So overall we have zero charge on the left, a net of zero charge on the right, and so in terms of charge conservation this interaction is possible. Next, baryon number. A neutron is a baryon with a baryon number of plus one, as is the proton. The electron and electron antineutrino are leptons, and so have zero baryon number. We have plus one on the left, plus one on the right, so in terms of baryon number conservation, this interaction is possible. Finally, lepton number. The neutron has zero lepton number, as it is not a lepton, as does the proton. The electron is a lepton with lepton number plus one, and the electron antineutrino is an antilepton with a lepton number of minus one. So we have zero on the left, a net of zero on the right, and in terms of lepton number conservation, this interaction is possible. And so, as we know, beta minus decay is possible as it does happen. Beta decay is a weak interaction and so strangeness would not be conserved. However, all the particles involved in beta decay have zero strangeness. Now let's look at an example such as you may get in an exam. Use the conservation laws to decide which of the following decays is possible for a sigma plus particle and it gives us the quark composition of a sigma plus as up, up, strange. In a question you will be given the quark composition of any particle other than the proton, neutron, antiproton, antineutron, the pions and the kaons. The properties of the individual quarks are given on the data sheet. Well, the first decay we're given is for the sigma plus to become a neutron plus a pi zero. In terms of charge, the sigma plus is going to have a charge of plus one, hence the plus sign. The neutron has zero charge and the pi naught has zero charge. So, straight away in terms of charge conservation, this interaction is not possible. For completeness we'll go through the others baryon number. The sigma plus is a baryon and so has a baryon number of plus one, as is the neutron. The pi zero is a meson and has a baryon number of zero, and so we have plus one, plus one, so in terms of baryon number this interaction would be possible. And lepton number, none of these particles are leptons, and so in terms of lepton number this also would be possible. However, with just one conservation law broken, the interaction is not possible. The next decay we're given is for the sigma plus to become a neutron plus a pi minus. And looking at charge, the sigma plus a charge of plus one, the neutron is neutral, the pi minus minus one. And so again, in terms of charge conservation, this interaction is not possible. Baryon number, the sigma plus is a baryon, as is the neutron, the pi minus is a meson, and so in terms of baryon number this would be possible. And for lepton number, again none of them are leptons, so we have zero lepton number throughout, and it would be possible. But again, one law broken, this interaction is not possible. The third decay would be for the sigma plus to become a neutron and a pi plus. And now for charge, we have plus one for the sigma plus, 
zero for the neutron, plus one for the pi plus, and so now for charge conservation this is possible. For baryon number, the sigma plus is a baryon, as is the neutron, the pi plus is a meson with zero baryon number, and so this is possible. And for lepton number, they're all not leptons and so have zero lepton number, and so this is possible. So this third decay is the only one which could be observed. We're then asked, is this a strong or a weak interaction with reasons? Well, if we write down the quark composition, we're told that the sigma plus is up, up, strange. The neutron we're expected to remember is down, down, up. And the pi plus we're expected to remember is up, anti down. So this will have a strangeness of minus one, and this and this have zero strangeness. Therefore, it must be a weak interaction, as strangeness is not conserved. Example 2 use the conservation laws to decide which of the following decays is possible for a delta plus plus particle, which we're told consists of three up quarks. Well, this is the first decay, with the delta plus plus becoming a proton plus a positron. In terms of charge, the delta plus plus has a charge of plus 2, the proton a charge of plus 1, the positron a charge of plus 1. So in terms of charge conservation, this decay is possible. Baryon number. The delta plus plus is a baryon with a baryon number of plus 1. It consists of three quarks as does the proton. The positron is an antilepton, and so has a baryon number of naught. So we have plus one on the left and on the right, so in terms of baryon number conservation, this decay is possible. In terms of lepton number, the delta plus plus is a baryon, not a lepton, and so has a lepton number of naught, as does the proton. But the positron being an antilepton, has a lepton number of minus 1, and so this is not conserved, and this decay is not possible. The next decay we're offered is for the delta plus plus to become an electron neutrino and a positron. So, in terms of charge, the delta plus plus has a charge of plus 2, neutrinos are neutral, and the positron has a charge of plus 1, so charge is not conserved, and this interaction is not possible. For completeness, I'll go through the others. Baryon number. The delta plus plus has a baryon number of plus one. The electron neutrino and the positron both have zero baryon number, and so this is not possible. And lepton number. The delta plus plus has zero lepton number. The electron neutrino has a lepton number of plus one the positron a lepton number of minus 1. So in terms of lepton number, this is possible. But don't forget, one violation of one conservation law means the interaction is not possible. And finally, does the delta plus plus become a proton plus a pi plus? Well, charge, the delta plus plus charge of plus 2, the proton a charge of plus 1, the pi plus a charge of plus 1 so charge is conserved. Baryon number, the delta plus plus, baryon number plus one, as has the proton. The pi plus is a meson with zero baryon number, and so this is possible. And in terms of lepton number, they all have zero lepton number, and so this is possible. So the third decay we're given could be seen.